Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the last lecture that I'm going to share with you today. And the topic of this lecture is on the history of the province of St. Ezekiel Moreno. It's, uh, we might say, beginning and how are the things that were accomplished you know, from 1998 until 2020. What were the accomplishments of this province of St. Ezekiel Moreno? And at the end, I'm going to share also with you the revitalization and restructuring of the Order of Augustinian Recollects. The province of St. Ezekiel Moreno was a vicariate of the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino. But reviewing our history, the province of St. Nicolas of Tolentino was born in the Philippines in 1621, comprising the whole Philippine mission including the Marianas Islands. And after the Second World War, the seat of the province was transferred to Madrid, Spain. As a result of this transfer, the Philippine Recollect province became a vicariate. The vicariate was also included China, Taiwan, and later in 1974, Guam. Now, the arduous road towards the creation of the province of St. Ezekiel Moreno did not begin in the 1970s. It began in the late 1950s. There were around six priests of the different religious orders and, and congregation who wrote a memorial to Pope Pius XII on September 14, 1957. Who were they? Father, Father Hila, Hila, Hilario Lim of the Jesuits, Padre Fray Benito Vargas of the Dominicans, Padre Fray Salvador Calzado of the Augustinian Recollects, Padre Fray Antonio Garin of the Augustinians, Father Fray Julio Obial of the Franciscans, and of the Society of the Divine Word, the SVD Fathers, no was Father Ambrosio Manaligod. The memorial written by the six religious priests addressed to Pope Pius XII addressed the following question and addressing it to the Pope. And what was these, quest these questions? How can the Catholic Church in the Philippines ever fulfill her providential mission in the Far East if the doors of the religious orders and congregations do not really and sincerely open to admit a form, a form and form native Filipino candidates? How can we ever hope to become missionaries to our Asian neighbors if we are not given full opportunity to become missionaries in our own country? How can we ever hope to become Christian leaders in a pagan far east if we are not given full right to exercise of leadership in our own country. Despite such public remonstrations, however, the six priests who wrote this memorial address to Pope Pius XII in various ways were silenced by their own superiors, and the movement they so passionately initiated passed into obscurity. However, the love for the Mother Church continued to grow among Filipino priests and religious, and this love would be expressed in serving the religious family with greater responsibility and collaboration. And allow me to share with you the, we might say, the second wave in the 1970s of how our Filipino recollect forebears proposed to the provincial, uh, we might say, chapter that was held in Marsilia, Navarre, Spain, of allowing Filipino recollects to be more responsible and to be prepared for such responsibility in running the Philippine Recollect Vicariate. But before that, no, allow me to give you these statistics. No? What was the stati statistics of the OAR Vicariate in the Philippines before the 1976 provincial chapter that was held in Marsilia, Navarra, Spain. We have in the Catholic Directory the 1974 status. This was two years before 
the provincial chapter of 1976 held in Marsilia, Spain. So what was the status of the, the OAR Vicariate at that time? There was one bishop in Puerto Princesa who was a Spaniard. And in the Vicariate in 1974, there were 97 priests. And in breaking them down, of these priests, there were 23 Filipino recollects, 70 Spanish recollects, one Chinese recollect, and one English recollect. For the non-clerical brothers, there were six, five Filipinos and one Spaniard. The seminarians at that time were the following. The theology in Spain, because our theology at that time was in Spain, because after the simple profession that was uh, in, our, in our novitiate in Baguio, these newly professed was, were sent to Spain for their theological studies. At that time, in 1974, there were 11 Filipino recollects studying theology in Spain. And in our philosophy in Baguio, there were 41 seminarians, three novices, and there were 20 minor seminarians in our minor seminary in San Carlos City, Negros Occidental. So see the ratio of how many foreigners, how many, we might say, non-Filipinos who were present in the OAR Vicariate at that time, two years before the 1976 provincial chapter in Marsilia, Navarra, Spain. How about the apostolates? No. There were two seminaries at that time, the minor seminary in San Carlos City, the novitiate in Baguio, and also the philosophy that houses also the novitiate in Baguio. One chap chaplaincy, and at that time, there were 16 parishes that were being administered by the recluse, and most of them were, uh, were found in Palawan. And there were eight schools, and these eight schools were the, the only university at that time, the University of Negros Occidental Recoletos in Bacolod City, San Sebastian College Recoletos in Manila, San Sebastian College Recoletos in Cavite City, and the Colegio de San Jose Recoletos in Cebu City. Secondary uh, schools were the following, the UNOR High School in Talisay, the Santo Tomas de Villanueva Recoletos in San Carlos, San Carlos City in Negros Occidental, the St. Pedro, Pedro Academy in Valencia, and the San Juan Institute Recoletos in San Juan, Batanga. So there were eight schools that the Recoletos were running at that time in the Philippine Bicari. Now, the second wave, we call no, that we might say, the second wave that there were already this, there were a number of Filipinos who were concerned of being prepared well for the responsibilities that would be given to them in the future, and they were asking for greater responsibility and collaboration in the in the Bicarit and petitioning the chapter fathers to prepare them well. So. Who were the, we might say, delegates who were sent to Marsilia, Navarra, Spain to represent the Filipinos, Filipino recollects at that time? No? There were Father Emeterio Buñao, Father Cirilo Durana, and, and Father Federico de la Rosa. They were the delegates of the Filipinos who were speak on their behalf in this provincial chapter. The Filipino vacations to the order in the Philippines had been increasing. However, many Filipino recollects, especially in the 1970s, decided to have an autonomous Augustine recollect province in the Philippines run by Filipinos. That was the desire, but this would be studied further. So there was a 14-point paper that was presented before the Capitular Fathers presenting the varied demands of the Filipino recollects in the Vicariate, like a petition to open a theology house here in Manila, that Filipinos should be prepared professionally, that they will be given bigger role in the governance of the Vicariate, and there should be a respect for the Filipinization laws of the Philippine education, educational institutions, you know, and other, we might say, we might say reasonable, we might say, requests coming from Filipinos you know, from the OAR Vicariate. 
The three pre-filled delegates were assigned to explain, to justify, and to defend the different demands of the paper that they presented. And this paper was called, when you are going to propose something, it was called, it is called inspired ponencia. So it was, we might say, the result of this petition, this 14-point request or manifesto, never reached the first base. Because the chapter fathers, the chapter members in Marsilla rejected the articulation point by point and uh, commenting that these, we might say, requests were preposterous, ambitious, and even bordering on the point of being in grades. That was the comment of one of the chapter members who were there. After that event, the Filipino recollects in the Vicariate now accepted the defeat and they settled calmly and yielded to the authority of the provincial chapter. And they were being taught to be humble and patient and ready to accept peace and not division in the Philippine Bikari. However, the Filipino recollects accept this decision, but with humility and patience are needed on the part of the recollect Filipinos in fulfilling their aspirations to be prepared for bigger roles in administering the OER Vicariate in the Philippines that would be in the future an autonomous province. That's why during the administration of Father Herman Chicote as Vicar Provincial, more recollect Filipinos were sent to Rome for further studies and afterwards they would return to the Philippines as formator in the seminaries. That's why during his term as Vicar Provincial, on December 5, 1985, the Recoleto Seminary, now called Recoleto's Formation Center, was formally inaugurated as the Theological Formation Center of the Agustin Recollect Vicari in the Philippines. Then on December 5, in 1991, the St. Ezekiel Moreno Novitiate Recoleto's Antipolo City was inaugurated because the Novitiate was housed before in after World War II in San Sebastian. It was housed in our philosophy seminar in Baguio. Then in 1985, it was housed in our Theologate in, we might say, Miranila Quezon City. But by 1991, when it was inaugurated on December 5, the Recollect the Bishop dedicated to St. Ezekiel Moreno was inaugurated. Thus, the Vicariate has its own uh, novice. That's why one of the, we might say, movements of the, we might say, towards a, an autonomous province, in 1992, the 51st OAR General Chapter held in Colombia had this enactment number 24. And what was this enactment? The general chapter views with gratitude the evolution of the Vicariate of the Philippines and China toward becoming a future province of the order. The chapter asked the, the general council to undertake the studies and organize the meetings necessary to make it possible for the general chapter of 1998 to establish a new province if it judges that it is opportune to do so. so this was a very important enactment in a general chapter held in Colombia. That's why this enactment, further studies, further counsel, and we might say preparations were to be made in order for a future Filipino recollect province to be created in after the next, after after the after the uh, after the sixennium of 1992. Hopefully by 1998, if the studies would be more affirmative, the members of the general, we might say, chapter that would be held in 1998 would judge such study to be, we might say, positive or negative. So what was the status of the OAR Vicariate of San Nicolas de Torrentino in the Philippines? By 1998, there were 122 Filipino Agustinian Recollects, both priest, uh, cler uh, clerical religious, and non-clerical religious. There were 18 foreign Agustinian Recollects, 
four houses of formation, two universities, two colleges, three high schools, nine parishes in the Philippines, and seven of these parishes were also administered in Thai. And seven parishes were being administered in our mission in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. That's why in 1998, after six years, the 52nd General, OER General Chapter was held in Monachil, Granada, Spain. And what, who were the representatives of this, we might say, uh, of this, uh, we might say, uh, General, 52nd General Chapter? They were Father Victor Luch and Reverend Father Emeterio Buñao. And uh, they were, we may given the voice, no? to present the status of the OAR Vicariate in 1998. That's why, what was the result of the study and the deliberation of the chapter fathers in Monachil, Granada, Spain, during the 52nd general chapter? As a result of this, we might say, deliberation, on November 28, 1998, the acts of the chapter was read. They were numbers 19 and 20. And it says, and they say, and they say, the general chapter erects a new province under the title of St. Ezekiel Moreno, the rights, privileges, and spiritual graces enjoyed by the province of the order. The new province is constituted by the houses that the province of St. Nicholas of Tolentino possesses in the Philippines, in Linyuan and Santimen, in, the, in Taiwan, and the mission of Sierra Leone. So, as we might call up in preparation for the first provincial chapter of St. Ezekiel Moreno, the general chapter members no, appoint the general, the general, we might say, chapter appointed some religious who would constitute the, we might say, interim no, provincial council of St. Ezekiel Moreno. Moreno. They were Father Victor Luch as prior provincial, Father Emeterio Buñao as first counselor and vicar of the province, Joseph, Father Joseph Trilip Drayvilla as second counselor, Father Samson Signoricos as, as third counselor, and Father Dionisio Cusenma as fourth counselor. So what was the status of the province from 2009 to 2021? On May 6, 2009, the St. Michael Archangel Parish with the Provincial Council became part of our Ministry of the Recollects in Taiwan. So our, we might say, the houses that were being held by the Spanish province of San Nicolás de Tonitri were given to the province of San Ezequiel Moreno in Taiwan. May 16, 2009, the establishment of the Correcole community in Kastian Island, Taitai, Palawan. On September 19, 2010, there was the former declaration of the Recoletos Pastor Care in Tambo Negros Occidental. Between December 6 and 8, December 6 and 8 of 2010, the Recoletos formation celebrated its silver founding anniversary. On November 3, 2011, acquisition of the 2.3 hectare of Balon ng Pare property in Inagawan, Puerto Princesa. On March 4, 2016, the establishment of the Recoletos community in Saipan. Then on July 7, 2017, with Bishop Nereo Odchimar of Tandag, Sirigao del Sur, you know, the, the memorandum of agreement was signed for the administration of the Quasi Parish of Nuestra Señora del Carmen in Hinatuan, Surigao del Sur. On October 9, 2017, the establishment of the Recoletos community in Urbistondo, Pangasinan, that is in, located in Pasibi East, Urbistondo, Pangasinan. And what was interesting in this, we might say, community, for the first time, the Archbishop of Lingayen de Gupan, Archbishop Socrates Villegas donated the church and the land to the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno. The first church and land ever donated in the history of the order of the Philippines by an archbishop. On June 4, 2018, the establishment of the Recoletos Caidyocan community in Barangay Caidyocan, Valencia, Negros Oriental. And of September 19 of that year, the arrival of the first Filipino Recollect missionaries in Pontianac, Indonesia. 
On December 15, 2018, the establishment of the Recoletos of the, the Recollect community in Claridel community in San Rafael Parish, Claridel, Aborlan, Palawan. Since 1998, the St. Ezekiel Moreno has been carrying the spiritual missionary torch by accepting invitations of the local bishop to accept parochial ministries, thus returning to their former missions, especially in Palawan and Mindanao. In the 21st century, the Augustinian Recollects of the said province has this mission vision statement that guides its modus vivendi while serving the needs of the Mother Church. And what is this mission vision statement? In line with our OAR Life and Mission Project and guided by the vision of the order, we, as a province, assume our own the mission to live, the to live and proclaim the gospel, bearing witness to a contemplative and fraternal life at the service of the kingdom and in a shared vision with lay people. Now, the last part of this lecture, allow me to share with you this short, we might say, process of revitalization and the restructuring of the order of Augustinian Recollects. By 2012, you know, there were eight provinces in the order namely the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, the oldest, then the province of Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria in Colombia, the province of St. Thomas of Villanueva, the province of St. Augustine in the United States, the province of St. Joseph, the province of Santa Rita de Casa in Brazil, the province of Our Lady of Consolation, and the youngest that was established was in 1998 was the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno. What is structuring and re re revitalization? The first, when you talk about structuring according to our, we might say, generally, particularly our prior general, Father Miguel Miro Miro, it is focused on the external structure of the order that must be amended and redeployed. Because this, since 2020, there are only 980 recollects throughout the world. And we have to restructure the provinces in order to meet the needs of the order and, again, be effective instruments of evangelization to the mother church. And second, what is revitalization? This refers rather to the interior dynamism of the order. But it needs to know also the genetic map of the institution and the purpose being followed from its origins, and this is the constitutions of the order. It is a book that contains the so-called charism, the genes that the Holy Spirit has implanted in the order. Without knowledge and interiorization of this genetic map in our OAR constitutions, renewal nor a minimal consistent and trustworthy restructuring would, be, would not be possible. That's why by 2021, out of eight, four provinces were were maintained. First is the province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, and the first province to be, we might say, we might say restructured and joined and merged with San Nicolas de Tolentino province was the United States of America province of St. Augustine. Then the province of Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria in Colombia, it, uh, the province that merged with this province was the province of Nuestra Señora de la Consolación. And the province of San Jose and the province of Santa Rita de Castro merged with the province of Santo Tomas de Villanueva. And the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno stands alone. So, very Reverend Father Miguel Miro, Miro the outgoing prior general, says, the revitalization process based on our charismatic identity is not over. It is an ongoing process. It starts from an encounter with Christ in one's heart and then moves towards fraternal life, the apostolate, and even the financial management, finally leading us to pastoral conversion and the community's sense of solidarity. It deals with a process that touches concrete everyday life and it encompasses the real mission of the entire order. So in a, in a recent interview, because he's ending, ending his term this year, there will, there, will, there will be the next general chapter that will be held in Rome. In Rome. 
what was his ad what was his advice to the next prior general whoever he may be that that will be elected next year he said listen to the religious seek the good of all and promote unity and synodality so that in the diversity of cultures countries and ministries we may walk as one and feel corresponsible for the life and mission of the order thus we could serve mother church without losing our charisma